I don't know if you're going to be a lecher, but you can't be a lecher for all the time for a tzedek. You go for him, it's good for all the rogue, the shon, all the hustle, the air, the air, the shelter, and the shelter, and the shelter. If you're not a lecher, you see, you know, you have a lecher, 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 you have a lecher. Lord, who shall dwell in your sanctuary? Who shall abide on your holy mountain? He who lives with integrity does what is right and speaks the truth in what he feels is in his heart, who does no evil to his fellow man, who does not take advantage of his neighbor. In his eyes, a vile person is despised, but honored those who revere the Lord. He takes an oath even to his own harm and does not change. Whoever does these things shall stand forever. Our rabbis now tell us it's a time to speak. Now, I'm going to speak first. And anybody else, I know you want to speak, and anybody who wants to speak are welcome to do so. Uh, the word that we use in English is a mixture of two words called eulogy. EU in Greek means good, and logos refers to words. Let me begin by making the simple observation that uh, I did not know Richard. Our paths in life did not cross. So to tell you I'm going to speak about my friend and buddy, that would be a lie. To try and review his life, I can't review anybody's life. To give judgment to life, I leave that to God. My role as a rabbi is to give direction. And I spoke to, uh, I spoke to uh, Jacob, I spoke to Gila, trying to find out a little bit about him. And I, I made some notes when I spoke to both of them. Number one, what was important in his life? And I think the most important word in his life was Jesus, his wife. And, you know, this is a love story. Uh, important to note, usually a woman is dependent upon a man, which is true. But then what happened? He became dependent upon her. And, and she was there. She was there constantly. So, number one in his life, what is most important in his life, was his wife. Also equally important was his love of humanity. Uh, I was told that he was a helicopter pilot inside Vietnam. Well, one has to recognize that if you're a helicopter pilot, you had one function, and that was to go to the battlefield, or to go to a mass shoot. And either to save a life or to bring a life. I mean, we, we stand here today and, and we think of a person who we knew, especially towards his end, who, had, who has no capabilities of, of really being able to do too much for others, but here is a man who is brave enough to, to risk his life. Life is not one moment. Life is many moments. Life has many areas to it. Uh, here was a man who would uh, give you the shirt off his back. And he, and he didn't do it to, to try and make an impression on anybody. He didn't do it to, uh, to show off. He did it quietly. He was there to help. It's called Matan Vesese. You give silently. Uh, Richard was an independent man. What do I mean by independent man? Uh, someone said to me last night when I was calling, he had no filter on his tongue. <laughs> all right? He had no filter on his tongue. Now, you're all smiling. Well, it's true, you know? You know I'm not going to stand there and lie to you. What he wanted to say, guess what? You said it. That's right. You know, there, there's, there's a word in English which everybody, well, he was stubborn. Not stubborn. The word in English is called tenacious. There were values that he had. And guess what? You're not going to take away his values. And if he felt that you were doing something that you shouldn't be doing, what happened? He would tell you. That was it. Uh, maybe it was because of what kind of work that he did in his life. You know, they, they always say if you want to find out something about an area, get in the cab. They know everything. Get in the cab. They know everything. And uh, this, this was his life. Uh, and, and all too often people tell you what they want to do, and, and uh, this was his, his reality. 
Uh, he loves sports in terms of watching football, watching baseball. So, so to say, these are the memories that were shared by me. Now I'm going to introduce those people who want to speak. And to me, anybody who wants to speak is welcome. Well, don't raise your hand. You're not in class. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to give you some direction. I'm used to raising my hand to rabbis. Yeah. You know, as, you know, as long as you're not raising your hand. Uh, there was, there was a, uh, the Baal Shem Tov of the Hasidim was asked the question on how you're supposed to mourn. And he said, first you cry. You cry because someone who's part of your life is no longer there. Then you're told to remain silent. Because if Richard can come back in a dream tonight and say, you know, it's not that bad over there, you know? I'm able to walk, I'm able to do a lot of things. Uh, that wouldn't make it any easier because you cry for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you're told to sing. Singing has a connotation of joy, but all of those are the memories that we have that made him what he was. So please, speak. Yeah, to listen. Okay. Okay. You gotta speak louder because yes. the rabbi can't hear. Mike. Um, um, yes, today we are here to remember. Take a deep breath. Take another deep breath. Don't worry. And pay our respect to Richie's wife. And to say, rest in peace to our dear beloved son, husband, father, son-in-law, father-in-law, uncle, and devoted friend. I like Richie, my brother-in-law, from the first moment I met him in flagship diner in Queens, New York. Well, later he told me that in one look, he fell in, I fell in love with your sister. And my sister described him to me as, he is this tall, handsome man. Forgive me. Richie always, <laughs> Richie had a unique sense of humor. And indeed was very, unique and lovely and to know him if you knew him to know him is to always love him when I was happy he was happy with me and when I was down he was always able to cheer me on I need to cry leave her alone I have so many good memories with him, and if there was enough time, I would share them all with you. So I will just share this one, or maybe a couple, if time will allow me to do so. So here they are. The first memory I have of him is when we met him in French. Jilla and I went to eat there. Um, we have kosher food tonight. <laughs> 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 they didn't order it. They have. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a kosher oven. Anyway. The, he, she saw him first and she said, she was very shy, so she said, you will get his number. I said, I will do better. We go with the pen on the phone and he was, he was on his way out. And so I bump into him and then he looked at me. <laughs> so I and I'm on this payphone back then. Thank God they didn't have cell phones. So he, she, um, I bumped into him, and and they looked at one another, and that was it. And but he said he has to go. Can I have your number? <laughs> because he, she's so Persian. She says, uh, No, I can't. So he gave me the card, the card with his name on it. So one side of it. And then he said, make sure she calls. And that one Saturday night we were bored and I said, call this man. He wants to go out with you. And uh, she said, no, no. So I, we have the same voice. So I called for her. And I said, Richie, you want to go out tonight? He said, yes. When? 
I could be there 20 minutes. <laughs> and that was it. They got married shortly after that. I mean, I say this stories after story come to my mind, and I will share them with you later. But, um, all right, I'll share it. <laughs> um, he never told her he was Jewish. He, he didn't say he wasn't, he didn't say he was. Until... Uh, oh, he said he's Italian. Yeah, until he, uh, they went to see his, uh, meet his mother, and after the marriage, she comes in. No. Well, I didn't want to say that one. <laughs> okay. So after she comes in, um, uh, she goes into the mother's house. She sees everything Jewish in there. Like, What's going on? He said, I'm Jewish. Mm. He, he liked to surprise her like that. He, mm. he was able to care for her all of his life except for the end. Even at the end, he did care for her. He wanted her to stay home, not only to be a housewife, to care for him, but to be comfortable. He didn't want her to work. And up to the last moment, he, um, he still wanted to care for her. All year, these nurses and doctors tortured her by calling her saying, he's going to pass away from the beginning of this year and before. But he held on because in order for her to get the only money they have, he, she had to be citizen. So the day that she became citizen, he passed away. So he was holding <laughs> on. He, he was a great guy and he, he cared for her up to the end. And when I went to see him just now, when I came out, because he did like to talk, I said to Jila, he's so quiet. And um, another thing I wanted to say is... Sorry.